we're going to talk about now. All right. Yeah, that's right. Black Widow. So, um, <laughs> so the movie starts off a, a little bit weird. Um, we see two kids uh, playing in a park or whatever, and then, um, you know, they go home and, you know, their, their, their father, you know, so, so basically, you know, they're all working undercover for, for like the Russian government or, or something like that. And um, the father tells them that they have to move because the, the covers got, was blown or, or something. And then we, we, we see them escape, you know, like, like they drive away from the house, you know, they, they make their way to a plane, you know, they get chased and, and, and shot at and whatnot. And, um, you know, they manage to, to fend off their um, pursuers and and make their escape uh, to Cuba where they meet um, with um, I forgot the game I forgot the guy's um, first name but, but his last name is Drakoff and um, he's going to be the main villain of the movie uh, basically um, so after um, you know, they make them escape and meet up with Drake off and whatnot. Um, so the two kids are uh, a young Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Black Widow, and uh, a young Yelena, who is uh, basically her sister. Um, they get taken to the Red Room for training, and th this is basically how they, you know, become Black Widows um, for, for the Red Room and whatnot. So fast forward to, to, to present day. Um... So, the rest of the movie takes place after Captain America Civil War. Excuse me. Natasha is on the run from the U.S. government and whatnot because, um, you know, because of the events of Civil War. So, um, you know, she, she's basically hiding and running from General Ross, who is in pursuit of her. And uh, we also see, um, you know, Yelena doing a mission in... Um, it was well. Well, it's it, it's somewhere else in the in the world. It's not in the same place as where Natasha is. And uh, basically, um, she, she she's basically there to, to kill somebody. And this person that she's chasing after, um, you know, throws some some red powder in her face. And and uh, she basically snaps out of what, what appears to be some sort of mind control. And uh, because she comes to the realization that, that she's just about killed someone who, who is apparently an ally. And, um, you know, she's told about the stuff that she was carrying, um, which is why she was being chased after in the first place. And then she takes it and, and goes on the run herself. Now, um, <clears throat> eventually, uh, I forgot how... how, how God damn it. Ah, the, the, the movie just came out, so, so cut me a break on, on forgetting ex what the exact sequence of events are in, in the film. <laughs> because, you know, I, I've only seen it once or twice. Um, so I, I don't remember exactly how, how things play out. But um, I think... I think... Natasha receives the the, um, the 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 vials that that she retrieved from the person that she killed to um, Natasha. Um, so, like, like she doesn't know um, what the vials are for, but but you know she she goes out to to like go shopping or whatever, and then she gets attacked by Taskmaster, who is the other villain of the movie. Now, um, when I, when I first saw uh, Taskmaster. Um, in, in the trailers for, for, for Black Widow, um, I thought that, um, you know, I, one of the big mysteries surrounding the character was, um, you know, who is Taskmaster actually going to be in this movie and whatnot. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get to that when, when, you know, we reach that part of the movie. But, um, yeah, um, I was really excited to, to, to see Taskmaster in an MCU movie finally, and um, well, again, we'll, we'll we'll talk about Taskmaster more once we get to that um, part of the film. But um, yeah, basically they they have a fight on a bridge, and um, 
we, we see uh, Taskmaster uh, display uh, his powers, um, you know, like like basically as they are. Like he has the ability to um, uh, basically do, you know, copy the moves of, of, of his combatants perfectly and, and whatnot. And we, we see this demonstrated in the fight on the bridge. So, um, <clears throat> Natasha realizes that, um, it's not her that she, that, uh, Taskmaster is after, but rather, um, uh, the vials that, that she received. Um, so, um, she ends up, uh, retrieving the vials and, and, and escaping with them, fooling Taskmaster. Um, I, I forget how, I, I think she falls in the river or something. Well, well, anyway... Um, Natasha meets up with, um, Yelena, and, um, of course, uh, they get attacked, um, where, where, where she is, and they have to make an escape from, from her captors, but before all of that, um, Yelena explains what the vials are, and, uh, basically, it's, it's an antidote for, for mind control, so, you know, that's why they're, they're so important, and that's why Taskmaster was trying to retrieve them. Now, um, we do get a, a little bit of a backstory on, on, on the movie's main villain, Drakeoff, here. Um, so, some several years ago, um, there was an assassination attempt made on Drakeoff, um, you know, because he's a bad guy and whatnot. And um, in, in, in the assassination attempt, it, it was basically a bomb going off. And apparently, Drakeoff's daughter w was, was present at, at the place where the bomb was meant to go off. And... Um, Excuse me. It's it's something from Natasha's past that's been haunting her for for a long time, and um, you know, so that's one of the things that um get, get, gets brought up a few times uh, in the movie, and um, uh, they decide to uh, rescue a uh, Red Guardian, who is uh, the guy that we saw at the beginning of the movie. Um, you know, the, the, the fake husband who is, you know, working undercover for, for the Red Room and whatnot. And uh, they decide to break him out of prison to, to help um, get information on locating the Red Room so they can go off to Drake off again. You know, so... Um, hang on. Let, let, me, let me do this first. So, um... Oh, okay. There's actually something that I want to mention here. Um, it, before the breakout, we, we, we see um, Red Guardian in, in a prison, uh, obviously. And, um, you know, he, he's arm wrestling the, the other inmates and whatnot. And um, one of the ones that we see is this really big, muscly guy with, with, with a beard. And, um, you know, Red Guardian's talking about how he once arm wrestled Captain America and... This guy doesn't believe it, and um, you know he <laughs> Red Guardian gets pissed and, and says, "You calling me a liar?" And and, and basically he 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 arm wrestles the, the guy so hard that um he, he basically breaks his hand. Um, so um, now um, it I I wouldn't really take a Red Guardian for a liar, or at least I don't really think he he would have any reason to lie. Uh, this is just based on what we've seen of his character so far, which is just this movie. But, um, you know, if he is telling the truth about arm wrestling Captain America, it, 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 it's suggestive that he might be referring to um, Isaiah Bradley from Falcon and the Winter Soldier, since, you know, this would be around the time when Isaiah would have gotten out of prison. Or it might be suggestive of um, a Captain America from another alternate reality, like... You know, this is, I don't really believe that this is what, 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 what happened in Endgame, but, you know, it suggested that, um, when, when Captain America returned the stones, um, back to their original timeline, he decided to stay behind, um, in his own time, which, you know, of course would lead to the existence of two Captain Americas at once in, in the main Marvel timeline, but, um, I don't know if I, I, I really subscribe to that 
idea. It, it seems contradictory to what the movie establishes about time travel and whatnot. Um, I, I'll, I'll give my thoughts on, on that at a later time. But, but, but yeah, basically the, the point is that there's some speculation to be had about whether or not he's telling the truth about arm wrestling Captain America and which Captain America he arm wrestled um, if he is telling the truth. And uh, but, but more than this, um, the, the big muscle guy that, that he arm wrestles when, when telling the story and whose hand he breaks, um, that is actually Ursa Major, who is a character from the X-Men. He is a mutant with the ability to turn into a bear. Now, apparently, it's officially confirmed that this is, in fact, Ursa Major, which, you know, would make him the, the, the first... Um, X-Men character to appear in the MCU um, after the Fox deal was made. Um, so, you know, at this point in time, they're still very slowly introducing things from the X-Men into the MCU. You know, they're not doing it all at once or in a way that's exactly overt or very obvious. You know, they're still doing it in ways that you know, only fans of the comics will recognize and you basically need to do research in order to know that, you know, these things are X-Men related. So, you know, and I think this approach works. Like, it's better for them to do it this way than to try to rush it and do everything all at once. <laughs> you know, because one thing that that's, that's very bad to do is to try to do too much all at once. So, you know, if they just throw in, like, a whole bunch of X-Men characters, introduce them in, in, a, in a bunch of unrelated stuff, you know, and <laughs> barely give us any time at all to explain who they are, where they come from, and whatnot, you know, it, it wouldn't be very good. So the fact that they're doing a much slower approach to introduction, introducing the X-Men and Fantastic Four to the MCU is uh, working out better than, you know, tr like I said, trying to do too much at at once so um so yeah um so yeah um all of that aside um you know yelena and natasha break red guardian out of jail and um uh <laughs> their 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 um their helicopter runs out of fuel as they try to make their way to their destination so they decide to um try to meet up with um what was her name? Alina, I think her name was. Hang on. Yeah, it's Melina. So they meet up Melina, who was, you know, their, their, their fake mother from when they were kids, you know, the undercover agents. And um, she is actually the source of the, the mind control device that uh, Yelena uh, acquired the, the cure for, you know, like... She can even control, you know, whether or not if, you know, like, because she, she runs a pig farm and, and you know, the pigs ha have this uh, thing that they have, too, you know, so she uses one of the pigs to demonstrate uh, how the, you know, the mind control thing that, that she invented works. And, um, yeah, so, um, you know, they, you know, reminisce and... and, and talk and, and, and stuff like that. God, I'm terrible at explaining what happens in this movie. But, um, but yeah, um, basically what ends up happening is uh, the Red Room ends up finding them. Um, they capture them, and they're taken directly to the Red Room, which is revealed to be in the sky, hence why they had such a hard time finding it. And, um, you know... Melina is taken to um, Drake off directly while um, Natasha um, and uh, Red Guardian are put in cells while Yelena is... I forgot what exactly they're, they were doing with her. I think they were going to re-implant the, the, the mind control into her, which is why they had her strapped to a surgical table and whatnot. So, um, as it turns out... Um, Melina told Natasha everything that was going to happen, so they planned for everything that was happening at the time and basically switched places. Uh, they, they, they used a digital mask to, to um, 
disguise themselves. So it was basically Natasha who was taken directly to Dragoff and Melina who was put in a cell. But of course they planned for this. So, you know, Melina has the means to, to break them all out. And, and um, of course she, she's using a radio control device to, to communicate with, uh, I think, Yelena and Natasha, but not Red Guardian. So, uh, yeah. Um, um, Natasha uh, tries to, to kill Drake off directly, but apparently, and, and well, I'll be honest, th th this part of the movie w was kind of silly to me. So, it turns out Drake off has pheromones, um, that somehow are <laughs> able to keep Natasha from, from hurting him. Which is why, despite the fact that she tries to stab him and whatnot, how she's able to... She can't hurt him, but, but he can hurt her. You know, I'm, I'm not I'm not really sure, you know, how that managed to work. But, hey, it's a comic book movie, so whatever. We'll, we'll just accept it. <laughs> and uh, so this is the, the, the big moments. Um, this is uh, when it's revealed who Taskmaster really is. And it turns out it's, uh, it is actually, um, Dreykov's daughter who, who is thought to have died in the previous assassination attempt, um, from many years ago. Now, a lot of people got really mad uh, about this reveal. Not, not necessarily because it wasn't Tony Masters that, that turned out to be Taskmaster, but rather because they, they, they changed the gender of the character of who Taskmaster is, you know. And like I just said, in the comics, Task, Taskmaster is a guy named um, Tony Masters. But in, in, the, in the movie, um, it's Antonia uh, Dracoff, you know, his daughter. So they, they were just, you know, a lot of people were, were just mad about the gender swap. And some people made that more obvious than others. But... A lot of people, you know, tried to use the fact that Taskmaster wasn't really Taskmaster in this movie as to why they didn't like Taskmaster in this movie. Now, I, I do want to say that while it is true that Taskmaster doesn't really have the personality that he, or, or in this case she, does in the comics, um, I feel like that should have been apparent before the movie even came out because in the trailers for Black Widow, we didn't see any of Taskmaster's personality in any of the scenes that we saw in the trailers that, that featured Taskmaster. In fact, you know, every single one of those trailers and throughout the entire movie, Taskmaster is completely silent. And in an earlier scene in the film, when we saw a chip being put into the back of Taskmaster's head, you know... So, so basically, the reason why... In the comics, Taskmaster has photographic memory... Like, he's basically, you know, he, he sees somebody do something and he's able to do it, you know. You know, if, if he's, if he visits a location and he revisits that same location, you know, in the dark, he can basically see in the dark because he can remember, you know, the layout of the, the room and, excuse me, and everything. So, you know, his, his ability to, to copy the abilities of others comes from photographic memory, but in the movies, it comes from a chip that that basically has the Taskmaster protocol <laughs> is what it's called. So um, even though Taskmaster in the movie doesn't have um, any of Taskmaster's personality from the comics, um, the character is still Taskmaster in function because what the character is still about is copying the abilities of other people just from watching them do them a single time. And we see that when Red Guardian fights Taskmaster. You know, he's got the Black Panther... Well, she has got the Black Panther claws. Um, she does the knife thing um, that, that, that Bucky does when, when, when he fights. Um, and, and, of course, we, we, see, um, we see Taskmaster do um, some of Batroc's kicks, um, which, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that, um, you know... They taught that to um, Antonia. So, um, yeah, um, a lot of people upset about the, the, the gender swap more than anything. Uh, more than the fact that, you know, Taskmaster wasn't Taskmaster because of the lack of personality, which, again, 
Should have been expected because we didn't see any of that in the trailers. So, you know, if we didn't see it in the trailers, we shouldn't expect it in the movie. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that's basically uh, my, my thoughts on that. And uh, also, the fact that... Um, for, for one thing, uh, Antonia lives at the end of this movie. And um, another thing is, uh, as far as I'm aware, the Taskmaster protocol chip was not destroyed. Which means that um, it could come back some point down the line and, and be utilized uh, in someone else or even Antonia again. And thus, we, we could end up getting a Taskmaster in the MCU that does indeed have um, Taskmaster's personality from the comics. So, and, and not to mention, as I just mentioned, you know, the events of Loki brought back the multiverse, which means they could very easily um, have an alternate reality uh, Taskmaster appear in the, in, uh, the uh, MCU and... and um, this alternate reality Taskmaster could have his personality from the comics. So it's not all doom and gloom when it comes to, to Taskmaster in the MCU. I think, you know, the, the, the negative reaction to t Taskmaster in the movie is very overblown. And, um, you know, it's it's not as bad as, as people make it out to be, basically. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh... After, you know, the, the reveal and everything, um, the way Natasha ends up defeating Dracov is, um, she, she basically, um, cuts off the connection to her senses. You know, she, she basically breaks her nose so that way she can't smell the pheromones anymore, and thus, that's how, um, she's able to, to hurt Dracov again. Again, um, she and Yelena planned everything, so, or, not Yelena, Melina, Melina told her everything, and, and that's how she knows about, um, you know, that, that, that's how she knew about the pheromones ahead of time, and, and how to, you know, break the nose so, so she couldn't smell. So, um, you know, at the end of the movie, they, they end up, you know, using the, the, the vials on all of the mind control, the widows that are under Dracoff's control, you know, setting them free. Uh, they destroy the Red Room, Dracoff dies, and, um, you know... Uh, Natasha, Yelena, Red Guardian, and Melina, you know, they all go their separate ways, uh, and somehow, <laughs> we don't see how it happens, but somehow, um, Natasha escapes, uh, General Ross and his men who are rapidly approaching the site where the Red Room crashed and everything. So, uh, uh, in the post credit scene, which is actually at the end of the movie, you know, after the scene's final, um, the movie's final scene, um, we see a guy who, who had been, you know, helping Natasha, um, lay low and, and everything. We saw him at the early of the movie. I didn't mention him because I don't really think he's that important, but yeah. Basically, he, he brings her the jet that we saw her use in Infinity War, and, uh, it's kind of clear that this scene takes place, uh, closer to Infinity War because Natasha's got the blonde hair in the scene, and, and uh, then in the post credit scene for the movie, um, it's basically um, Yelena visiting Natasha's grave, because of course Natasha died in Avengers Endgame. And uh, we see Valentina from The Falcon and the Winter Soldier uh, make an appearance here, and um, she basically tells Yelena that, that Hawkeye is the one who, who, who killed Natasha, and assigning um, Yelena to basically target him. And um, <laughs> I'm not really sure um, how this will work exactly because I would think that Yelena would know the actual circumstances um, behind Natasha's death. Um, I, I don't really think that, um, like, I just don't know how, how she wouldn't know, you know. So I'm not really sure if Valentina is, is testing Yelena here. To see if she would actually do it or to see if she actually knows or if, you know, like, I really don't know what's going on here. We'll have to see, but this is obviously setting up, you know, the Hawkeye show that, that that's supposedly coming this year, but I don't know. Um, certainly, it seems possible that... Um, you know, I, I, I'll just... Um, 
we're pretty much done with the Black Widow discussion here now, so uh, I'll just uh, start talking about delays and whatnot right now.